they all seem to be good people. And uh, they all have records to be proud of, either in public service or in uh, private business or in both. And so uh, I think we're lucky here. And, you know, we talk a lot, and I talk a lot, about American exceptionalism, that the United States has a special role to play in the world, and that we're different. Uh, America is, is, is different and better uh, than most other places in the world, and that what we need to do, American exceptionalism is not a series of privileges, it's a series of duties. Uh, because we're the United States of America, uh, our job is to be the good guys, and we do have to hold ourselves to that standard. Uh, but much as I like to talk about American exceptionalism, I also talk about Acadian exceptionalism. We, we talk about, we talk about uh, American values, and there are American values, and those are really universal values. Uh, but we also talk about Acadiana values. Uh, and I think that, that we have a level of civility and decency here uh, that Washington uh, would be lucky to learn from. And so whoever we send to Congress, first of all, I hope we'll have a, a clean and positive race. There's nothing wrong with accentuating differences, uh, differences in policy, differences in experience uh, among the candidates, uh, but it ought to be a positive race because we are all good people. I think this district also is likely to produce a conservative uh, member of Congress. It has uh, for the last, as far as I can remember, uh, it's, a, it's a conservative district, it's pro-life, uh, the people here are pro-Second Amendment, they believe in small government, they believe in low taxes, and so our member of Congress will uh, reflect those values. Uh, but to the extent that, that I'll be different, why people should support me instead of somebody else, uh, partly it's because I do have some experiences and skills which I think might make me a uniquely effective uh, representative. I worked in Congress for about 10 years. I worked for Congressman Dave Treen uh, in his first term in Congress in 1972 uh, when I was two years old. <laughs> uh, actually, just after I got out of college in 1973. And then I later went to work as a senior staff member for the House International Relations Committee. And I learned that the way you get things done, the way you win, even when there are people who disagree with you, is first, you've got to be polite. Uh, you've got to be respectful. You've got to treat other people as human beings. But secondly, you have to be principled. You have to be firm. You have to be relentless. You have to tell them that there are lines you will not cross, and you have to really believe that. Uh, so I like to think that the issues, the issues I've talked about, uh, small government, low taxes, the right to life of every human being, uh, having a foreign policy that's really an American foreign policy where we, we, we let our friends know that they can trust us and we let our adversaries know that they must respect us. These issues are why I will be there. I will get up every morning and I will think, how can I work to protect, to promote the right to life? How can I work for a truly American po foreign policy that reflects our just interests and that also reflects our values? How can I work for smaller, more efficient, more responsive government, less expensive government? You know, it's fashionable in Washington and in the mainstream news media to say that, that, that low taxes or cutting taxes is some kind of a, uh, of a conservative fetish, uh, that it's just something we like to say uh, and that waste, fraud, and abuse are slogans. But I worked in the government. I was in Washington for longer than I care to admit. Uh, I was never of Washington, but I was in it. And if you've worked there, you know, waste, fraud, well, not so much fraud, but waste and abuse are all around you. Uh, there are lots of good people who work in the government. Many of them are also intelligent and hardworking. But the institutional culture of government agencies is to get bigger. Everybody judges their success from one year to another by whether they have more people working for them, by whether they have more full-time employees and more money in their agency. And it's Congress's job to say no to that. Not always to say no, but to know when to say no and to be willing to say no and not to be afraid to say no. Yeah, yes. We don't have... We do not have a low tax problem in the United States of America. We've got a government spending problem, and we've got to get hold of it. And I've talked a little bit about the right to life. 
But you know, there have been many times, there are many more important things in the world and in the universe than politics. And there have been many times when I wanted to just say, you know, politics is just too much work and it's, it's kind of an unpleasant kind of work and I'm not going to do it anymore. And one of the things that, that prevents me from getting uninvolved in public life is the fact that as great a country, as good a country as we are, uh, a million unborn children still die every year because of abortion. And I'm sorry, those are not American values. Those are not Acadian values. No. That's something that got done from the top down, and we've got to figure a way to turn it around. Yeah.